For the past few days, I've been using FreeBSD, not just as a server OS, but as a daily driver desktop OS. Some of you might be wondering why I decided to do this. Well, like most of the things I do on this channel, the answer is curiosity. Just like the video where I replaced my PC with a Raspberry Pi, I'm not recommending people just ditch Linux and switch over to FreeBSD. But I was curious if I could theoretically make the switch. Before we get into that though, we should do a wee comparison. In some ways, Linux and FreeBSD are quite similar. They're both free as in Libre Unix-like systems, so they follow a similar paradigm when it comes to things like how the file system is structured compared to, say, Microsoft Windows. They also run a similar suite of applications, from basic command line utilities like Git and Vim, to desktop environments like KDE Plasma, to client applications based on the GTK and Qt toolkits. On the surface, a FreeBSD desktop could look exactly the same as a Linux desktop. Linux and FreeBSD are also available for more niche architectures, like RISC-V and PowerPC, not just x86 and ARM. But in other ways, they are very different. For starters, FreeBSD is a full operating system, whereas Linux is technically just the kernel. Most Linux distros use the GNU core utilities, and so you might hear the term GNU slash Linux used to refer to the general system, but there are exceptions such as Alpine Linux. Likewise, you can also have a GNU system without the Linux kernel. Since FreeBSD isn't as fragmented, there aren't thousands of distros like with Linux. Another difference is not the systems themselves, but the licensing. GNU Linux is under the GPL, whereas FreeBSD is under the BSD license. Although both are free software licenses, the GPL is a copyleft license, while the BSD license is permissive. So if you fork or redistribute a program licensed under the GPL, your copy has to remain under the GPL for the sake of conserving the freedom of free software whereas the BSD license doesn't have this restriction. This is a big reason why the PS5's operating system is based on FreeBSD. Of course, there are some other differences, but I think these two are the most significant. I installed FreeBSD on my Lenovo ThinkPad P50, which has a Core i7-6820HQ, 32GB of RAM, and an NVIDIA Quadro M2000M. There are two reasons why I'm using my laptop even though I believe my desktop is the better option hardware-wise. First of all, I had some problems booting into FreeBSD. This is most likely because my desktop is Libre-booted. At some point, I plan on compiling a different ROM, and I did consider going back to the proprietary BIOS just for this video, but I couldn't be asked. Secondly, my laptop makes a good litmus test because it has hardware my desktop doesn't, like a webcam and a battery. The installation process of FreeBSD is similar to Debian or Void. You don't have a graphical live environment like you would with, say, Linux Mint, but you're also not manually typing out every command like you would with Gentoo. Installation is fairly straightforward, but since FreeBSD is primarily used as a desktop OS, there's some extra work you have to do like installing sudo, granting yourself root privileges, installing graphics drivers, and installing your desktop environment. Having used FreeBSD almost exclusively for the past few days, I figured I'd discuss what I like and what I don't like. The first thing I really like is the handbook. It's extensive, yet organized and well-written, even for FreeBSD noobs like myself. It's available as a PDF for offline viewing, and I can think of a few situations where that would be handy. There's also a FreeBSD wiki, the second thing I like is the package management. FreeBSD has a binary package manager called Package. Of course, you have the bog standard FOSS packages you'd find in most Linux package managers, but you also have more niche programs. For example, to install LibreWolf on FreeBSD, it's as simple as sudo package install LibreWolf, whereas on Linux, it depends on the distro. And if your distro isn't supported, you might have to use a flat pack or app image. There's also an optional ports collection if you want to compile a package with different features or settings compared to the pre-compiled binary, although the handbook advises against using both ports and packages. 
I was also surprised by just how much software is available. Programs like FreeCAD and Blender aren't officially supported on FreeBSD, and yet they just worked like they would on Linux. I'm actually editing this video on FreeBSD using Caden Live, Audacity, Critter, and OBS. The third thing is stability. Now, not everything works on FreeBSD, and I'll get into that in a minute, but I haven't had anything crash on me, and I haven't had anything that does work suddenly stop working. The fourth thing is ZFS, and yes, I say ZFS even though I'm British, as I'm used to hearing Americans say it, and it sounds more fluid. I had to mention ZFS as it's one of the main selling points of FreeBSD. It's great in terms of data integrity, scalability, performance, and it has a bunch of features. So it's more than just a file system, and it's built into FreeBSD natively. This is also why FreeBSD is a popular choice for servers, and why systems like TrueNAS Core are based on it. The fifth thing is security. This is also a key selling point of OpenBSD, although I don't know much about OpenBSD, so take my word with a grain of salt. This is accomplished through things like Capsicum sandboxing, jails, and advanced networking features. Although it's probably more relevant for a server environment compared to me as a desktop user, hence why PFSense and OpenSense are also based on FreeBSD. That said, things aren't all sunshine and rainbows. For starters, I had some compatibility quirks with my laptop's hardware. The webcam doesn't work, I can't adjust the screen brightness, and I can't change the performance profile. So even if the battery is at 1%, the computer will run at full speed until it just dies. And for some reason, a lot of common shortcuts like Alt-Tab weren't set out of the box. But I was able to import a profile within Plasma settings, so it wasn't a big deal. Now, Wi-Fi is kind of finicky, because the FreeBSD installer did recognise my internal Wi-Fi card. But since I was using Ethernet, I figured I could just set up Wi-Fi post-install. But it wasn't that simple, so I now know to set up Wi-Fi during the installation. However, I didn't have any hardware issues using GhostBSD, which is a Fulker FreeBSD, so maybe I'm just doing things wrong. But in general, FreeBSD is not as plug-and-play as most Linux distributions. I should also clarify that although NVIDIA works with FreeBSD, and I didn't have any issues in terms of performance, there were some quirks like a lack of NVENC encoding in OBS, and the fact I couldn't use Wayland. I don't know if that has anything to do with NVIDIA, and I personally don't care about the whole XORG vs Wayland debate. I just use whatever works. But I figured it was worth mentioning. The second problem I had was printing. Long story short, my printer just isn't compatible with FreeBSD. I could probably find a hacky solution to get it to work, like setting up a network print server, be that on a dedicated device or even a Linux guest VM within FreeBSD. Although to be honest, if I daily drove FreeBSD, I would probably just get a new printer. And the final problem is a lack of proprietary software, although depending on your perspective, this might be a good thing. There's no native build of programs like Discord, Slack or DaVinci Resolve, I say native build because there is a Linux compatibility layer for FreeBSD, and it might be possible to get some programs working that way, but I can't guarantee anything. Depending on the program, this may or may not be a big deal. Discord can run in the browser, so for the most part it's OS agnostic, but you do miss out on features like push-to-talk and activity status. That's a common theme you'll notice. It's technically possible to do things, but sometimes it's not the most optimal or obvious way. Before I conclude the video, I want to discuss two things, those being virtualization and gaming. For virtualization, FreeBSD has a native Type 2 hypervisor called Beehive. I didn't get how it worked at first, but once it's set up, it's easy to create and manage VMs, and there are a few built-in templates. Most of these are designed to run in the terminal, but you can also run graphical operating systems like Windows by accessing the VM through a VNC viewer like Tiger VNC. Another good option if you want smooth graphical performance is enabling remote desktop and connecting with the RDP protocol using Ramina.
VirtualBox is also available for FreeBSD, but I couldn't get any VMs to launch, and I would just get an error about the VirtualBox kernel module not being loaded. Although in fairness, I've received similar errors on Linux. Now for the big question some of you might be pondering about. Can you game on FreeBSD? The answer, yes and no. You can certainly do some gaming on FreeBSD. You've got FOSS games like Xenotic, emulators like Dolphin, and there are source ports for older games like Morrowind and Doom 3. You can also run the latest version of Minecraft Java Edition using Prism Launcher, with similar performance to Linux. For other games, things get a bit tricky though. There's no native build of Steam on FreeBSD, but despite that, there are at least two ways you can get Steam running. The first option, and in my opinion the better option, is running the Linux version through the Linux compatibility layer, but I couldn't get this to work. Another option is using a program called Mizutamari, formerly known as Homura. This installs the Windows version through Wine. The Steam client is quite sluggish and unpleasant to use, but I was able to get Gary's mod, Half-Life 2, Hotline Miami, and an indie game called Refunct working. I was also able to get Osu running. I know Osu isn't on Steam, but Mizutamari includes installers for other applications. So what do I think of FreeBSD? Am I going to switch to it anytime soon? The short answer is no, at least not exclusively. This is mostly because of compatibility issues with other devices and standards. And realistically, Linux already does most of the stuff FreeBSD does, and more, especially on the desktop side. However, I was really surprised not just by how much software runs on FreeBSD, but how easy it is to get running, and how well it runs. Especially considering a lot of these programs aren't natively supported on FreeBSD by the developer. And because I enjoy stuff like this, I could definitely see myself trying FreeBSD as a server OS, or maybe running it on another desktop. That's it for today's video, and until next time, cheerio.